Hey good people, Batavia here. We are ready for our August front yard garden tour. See you in a few. Okie doke, so quick housekeeping items. Thank you to those who like, watch, subscribe, comment, and share Be Better Guard. We appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider it. There's a button below, and you can hit that notification bell so you'll be alerted each time I share more hashtag Garden Joy. All right, so it's August the 15th. We're gonna do the front yard garden tour. Um, we have garden tours from July of this year. I'll drop the playlist below and you can check those out. We did one for the front yard garden, the backyard garden, as well as a container garden tour, which is a part of the container gardening series. So let's dig in. Okie doke, so here is the front yard garden in all of its glory. I slept in this morning, so it is just about 7.30, and um, we're gonna get some city noise and city traffic, but that's fine because that's what it's like being an urban gardener. I'm in the middle of a big city. I'm in Chicago, uh, specifically <laughs> Zone 6A. Um, and this is the second year that I've been growing food in the front yard. This is going on the 12th year that I've been gardening. I have some space in the backyard that I garden in as well. Next tour will likely be the backyard garden. But um, I wanted to share the progress from our last tour in July. So this is one of the containers. I'm going to go ahead and go over those as well. I've had the worst time with squash this year and specifically the squash vine borer but this is that early scallop um, which I've gotten one off of the plant so far and there's another huge one there that I'm thinking it's time to harvest um, so it's my first time growing them and I'm hoping I enjoy it um, I don't know though there's one more tucked away in there with a cucumber <laughs> um, we'll see I haven't tasted it before so we'll see how it tastes as to whether or not I give it a try next year. But there's been a lot of watering and fertilizing. I think these containers are probably just a bit small, although they're like 15 or 17 gallons, I can never remember. This is bed number one, where you will see cucumber vines. Basically, that's all you'll see. So I overplanted, because that's a thing that I do. I have a bunch of cucumbers. I've already harvested a bunch. Um, the vines are just kind of coming out of everywhere, which is kind of cool. Um, you can see here, they're just strolling along the fence. I made this trellis earlier this year and it's really serving a purpose. So these are cucumbers and this is exactly how I wanted them to grow. I'll harvest those today. I'm going to do another batch of pickles. Um, I have some that have gotten a little bit larger than I would have liked. Uh, so. You have there, that one got away from me. But uh, all in all, these pickling cucumbers, I think it was National Pickling Cucumber, which is a popular brand. Uh, and then there's one more brand that I use for the pickling cucumbers. Um, so yeah, plenty of those. And then I have some um, straight eight cucumbers. I think there's one more kind of your typical slicing cucumber that I have in here. And then there is the confetti peppers, which I really love. They're small, they're a snack pepper, uh, they change colors, they have the variegated leaves, which are super cool. And so they've not done great in this bed, um, but I do have them in some other places, some containers, and they are doing really well there. Because I overplanted, I do have some sacrifices here. This is the orange picnic pepper. Um, so I had a couple plants here that just really haven't taken off. And so I'll mark that as a lesson learned for next year. <laughs> We're gonna move on to bed number two, which is behind all of these flowers. Um, so this is, actually let's start on the other end. Got a little bit of shade there. So these are primarily peppers in the first two rows. You could see where I, um, 
marked off a row with that string there and so I have this bed separated into basically three rows um, two and then three on this side so the first two rows are all peppers and then this last row is primarily melons um, so these are jalapeno peppers which the plants are kicking butt I finally got the kind of number of plants for what I want to do with jalapenos right I'm gonna do a count at the end of the season to see how many I planted to determine like is this the exact number I want to plant next year a little bit more a little bit less um, then we make it some candy jalapeno pepper again or candy jalapeno peppers um, also known as cowboy candy which I so enjoyed I've always wanted to pickle uh, jalapenos which is one of my favorites um, so we're gonna do that you can see they're just everywhere I mean crazy love it love it love it um, so more jalapenos and then there are cayenne peppers and I thought these cayenne peppers were something different like maybe I had mislabeled it um, because they were much larger than what I'm used to seeing that looks like my neighbor's plant so I planted this for my neighbor she gifted me this plant um, as well as this bell pepper plant so I have to actually give her a ring she's a few doors down to see if she wanted these as green bell peppers or if she wanted them as like red peppers which you know it'll take some time for those to change colors but um, bed number one is kicking butt you see the zinnias the yellow zinnias there so pretty um, but I'm gonna go on the inside to show you the melons that are growing in here and it's getting hot so forgive the light um, it's kind of hard to see because all of these leaves have shadowed everything but I have some melons that are just growing so big these are um, the honey what is it it's no it's mango hybrid and I just harvested one this week first melon I've never grown melons before first year and I'm uber pleased it's it was super sweet I got it just in time um, you can see a couple of others down here and then I have what I think will be my single watermelon it's a mini watermelon and um, I ended up like over planting because it's a thing I do and the other melons basically took over and so it's been hard to make room for the watermelon plants but it is what it is I'll adjust next year um, I do have you check these out these are asparagus beans so these have gotten too long <laughs> I've been tasting them at different sizes and when they're a little bit smaller like no, not even that size when they're a little bit smaller smaller they're a little bit tastier um, they're still tender very beany um, not so much of a hint of asparagus though so I don't know we'll see I grew them just because kind of you know novelty kind of cool looking um, but you can see they produce a lot of bean so I'm thinking I'll grow them next year but just try to stay on top of when to harvest them um, I've basically just been eating them raw um, so far because I haven't pulled any off the plant but I'll need to pull these off so that's what it looks like Ow. <laughs> well, it was super hot um, but forget my sweating it's the thing you do in the summer but the bigger they get the more of a chalky flavor they have um, that's not how I prefer my beans but it's still edible um, so again just a note harvest them when they're a little bit younger so I actually just unconsciously took a seat here I have my milk crates here and it's a good time to take a look at the uh, sweet potatoes so I've not grown you're gonna see a theme there are a lot of things that I haven't grown before um, and this is again the second year for the front yard garden and this is the second year I've had this much growing space so I've been folding in a lot of new things and so sweet potatoes and generally root vegetables I've mentioned this in previous videos make me nervous um, these sweet potato vines look pretty good 
I was expecting kind of more growth from them. They've been planted for about two months now and um, they look healthy so I'm just going to continue to roll with it. I've been trying to do a good job of keeping them um, moist but not soaked. So we'll see I guess maybe in a couple of months. I guess maybe a month and a half or so how they do. Um, so let's take a look on the other side for bed number three. And if you're wondering it is as tight of a walk as you can as you're thinking I'm kind of squeezing through so this is bed hey good morning <laughs> so this is bed number three hey baby <laughs> look can you see me I know it's a lot of green stuff <laughs> so um, this is bed number three we'll start on this end where there are okra plants and they are doing really well the only inconvenience is trying to get to the okra plants that are on this inside there um, I'm gonna harvest some I've been done like I'll give myself a B plus at keeping on top of the okra um, but it's a tight squeeze you can see the fence here and then the okra plants are just becoming trees like they do so one quick note this is that zucchini plant that is dying I'm gonna pull it it's um again squash vine borer I've already lost two or three plants to them um, but I have some more well I have, we haven't shown the eggplant yet but there's some eggplant that's in there uh, these are more bell peppers and they've done just okay over here um, that one's going bad it looks like yeah I'll cut that off but um, I think this is a shading issue um, but we have a couple that are on these plants um, the ones in the back are doing a little bit better so I'll make some notes in my head for next year for that we have the green zebra which is doing really well this is what it looks like it could actually turn a little bit more orange when it comes to it being ripe um, I'll probably cut one of those off because I love the flavor and I haven't had one yet this season um, oh there are more melons on the inside of this trellis too coming out of bed number three so these are more cantaloupe um, and then I thought I had some honeydew melons in here I don't know anymore so <laughs> we'll see what produces but these are much smaller which is what I was intending I've been using a combination of tool fabric so some of the old tool uh, that I used last season to cover my beds in the backyard um, and then again some t-shirts for these larger ones but uh, yeah bed number three is kicking butt all right so beds number four five six and seven I mean I don't know if you can see where one bed ends and another one begins but I'm gonna dig in here and show you what I got this is the cucumber melon no no the um, lemon cucumber plant um, it's growing and I've been peeking in I don't see a whole lot of cucumbers so I don't know what the deal is there a lot of space being taken up for not a lot of cucumbers so I grew these last year didn't get any cucumbers tried it again this year I'm hoping to get one or two so I can decide whether or not I want to continue to grow it these seeds were gifted to me so wanted to try to use them I also have um, eggplant in here which we've gotten a bunch of eggplants off of this plant and then if you move in to this other bed next to it there are a bunch more eggplants a different variety here but then there's the little finger there which is let's see let me go around the other side okay that's a better angle um, so there are more um, eggplants we had some heavy winds about a week ago so some of these branches have broken so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these limp branches because ultimately they're just gonna die off um, kale Russian kale here 
which I think maybe I've benefited unknowingly from some companion planting. That white moth, knock on wood, hasn't attacked this one yet. Um, it's kind of tucked in there. This is the cucamelon kind of vine trellis that I created. And um, yeah, so I'm not impressed. Um, I have cucamelons here that um, seem to be the size that they're supposed to be but they just don't like I was expecting like a kind of a pop of flavor and I've been eating them at different sizes and um, so so this is kind of a size right um I kind of feel like it's that episode of friends where Ross and Rachel are at the doctor they're looking at the ultrasound and like the doctor and Ross see the baby and they're just like oh and then Rachel's just like I don't see it it's kind of like I don't I don't get it with cucumber cucumelons like it's refreshing maybe but there's really no flavor to note so I don't know maybe I'll research it over the winter to see if there's something that I can be doing like to amend where I plant these to give it more flavor but so far yeah cute but <laughs> that's all I got for it so all right let's go ahead and finish up here so last thing I think no last thing no not last thing so let's <laughs> squash plant summer squash I've basically been satisfied with getting a couple of squash off of the plant. I think there's one down here. Um, so this is the yellow squash. Again, most of my squash plants have been attacked. Um, there's some basil that's tucked in the, here as well as a couple of pepper plants that are on the other side. But the reality is you're not going to be able to see them. I can barely see them. <laughs> um, but. Here are all of the tomatillo plants. There are three plants back here. And these vines are more cucamelons, which probably it wasn't the best idea to plant them near another kind of vining plant. But hey, this is where we are. But check this out. I've been watching them and I expected them to be bigger. So I'm not so sure. Like, we'll see. But yesterday I accidentally knocked one off or maybe I found one on the ground and so it was like this one another one fell and I opened it up and um, it's the cutest little thing so I was online and you're supposed to wash these off I totally ate it straight so I'm gonna <laughs> go ahead and hope that it doesn't kill me um, oh. That's the flavor I was expecting from the cucumelon. Like that's like citrusy, tangy sour, but a tangy sweet. So I'm growing them for tomatillos. Like that's the goal to make salsa verde. But I don't know, man. It's pretty tasty. I mean, I guess I wouldn't want dozens and dozens and dozens of them just to eat that way. So I'm gonna stay committed to them being tomatillos for the purpose of salsa verde, but interesting, you know, so, um, I think that is what I wanted to share and show for the front yard garden. Okie doke, so thanks for watching, appreciate you spending some time with me this morning. I'm going to get inside, I harvested collard greens this week, and I'm having a collard greens and cornbread for breakfast. And I'm disturbing the pollinators, so I'm going to let them get to work while I get to work. I'll see you all in the next one.